This video is best viewed in higher definition. To enable, click the Settings button at the bottom of the page, just here. Then click the drop down box under Quality. And then select the highest definition offered, in this case 720HD. Enjoy the video. So I'm now going to look at the second screen of DTFL Pro and explain the inputs. So this is the stop run and confirming candle criteria. So I'll open it here and you can see there's a number of inputs. We'll just go through them one by one. The first one is they allow, allow the stop run to also be the confirming candle. If you wish to um, have that input applied, then you tick this radio button and that's on. If you untick this off, there's a simple on off option. Some would say that by ticking it is uh, it, it may be a more aggressive option by selecting this. That's of course that's for you to consider. So let me explain what what this means. To do so, I'm going to open up the the manual which you'll receive, and we'll look at this example here on the left hand side. So here's uh, a PP line, the black line here. So ignore all this stuff to the right. We're just looking at this area here. There's been a candle here. The first candle and then the second candle has gone up through the PP line it's broken it by more than three pips so it's become a stop run so that's what the little red arrow would signify on the chart a little arrow would appear just like that signifying that a stop run has occurred and then price has retraced back past the PP line and actually closed below the previous candle and it therefore not only is meets the criteria for a stop run having broken through the uh, PP line by a certain amount of pips but it also meets the criteria for a confirming candle so in this case the yellow arrows were shown at the top showing that this candle is both a stop run and a confirming candle now if you've got this applied if you've got the little checkbox ticked then this can occur you can have a stop run and a confirming candle on the same candle in a circumstance similar to this However, if you've got this unticked, look, if you've got this unticked, well, as you can see there, what that would mean is that only that you'd only count it as a stop run. It would ignore the fact that it's met the criteria for confirming candle because you've told it to ignore it. And so it would start to look for the confirming candle on subsequent candles. As I say, some people may think this is a slightly more aggressive um, option, but again, it's for you to consider through your back testing and your analysis of the market. So hopefully that explains this option here. It's a simple on off allowing the stop run to also be the confirming candle. And I've given you an example of, to show you what that would look like. The next input is the minimum breakthrough pips that the stop run has to make past the PP line for it to count as a stop run. So let's look at the manual again and currently this is set the stop run is set at 1.5. Let's change that to 3. And let's change this to 100 and then apply and then set it up again. So it's all changed. Oh, let's change that to 4 as well, actually. I think that's similar to what we've got on the manual now. And apply it and open it. So there it is. Let's open the manual up again. Yeah, that's much more much similar, isn't it? So, in both these examples here, we've got the minimum breakthrough pips required plus the PP line for a stop run to occur is it must break it by at least three pips. This so happens to be the same figure that Sterling uses in his room. So the stop run would need to come up to the PP line, go through it by at least three pips. As you can see here, this dotted line is meant to represent, meant to re represent three pips. And as soon as it's got to three pips or more, then a stop run would occur and you get this little symbol appear. In this situation here, so you've got again the blue candle, it's going up through the PP line, it's broken the set amount you've put, and again, a stop run would occur. That's quite simple there. Um, you could put anything you want there. If you put zero in here, if you put zero, then what would happen is that if the stop run came up and touched the PP line, if it just came up and got to this point here, then that would 
count as a stop run. So it wouldn't have actually break through the level. It would just to come up and touch the level. If you put it at 5, then it would have to break through the level by 5 pips. It would have to go further past the PP line. It's just the reverse if you're doing for a lower PP line, then the price would have to come down through the PP line below the PP line by that amount of pips. So it's just the converse of what I'm showing you here. So they're the two inputs in relation to the stop run, whether you're going to allow the stop run and the confirming candle to be on the same candle, as we have in this example, or whether you're going to decide, don't want them to have the potential of being on the same candle, this candle be the stop run, and then it would have to be a subsequent candle that is a confirming candle. The second one is stop run minimum breakthrough pips, which is the amount of pips that the current price must break past the PP line for it to become a stop run candle. So now let's look on to the next four inputs. Now these are all in relation to describing how you want your confirming candle to appear. You've got a lot of flexibility here to describe the exact type of confirming candle you want. The first input is the minimum body of the confirming candle in pips. So in this example here, the entry has been put in is four. So the confirming candle must be at least four pips. And when I'm saying at least four pips, I'm talking about the body of the candle. So in this situation, let's have a look. Let's just have a look at the chart. It's easy to show you. So let's take this candle here. For that to be a confirming candle, what you do is you measure the body of the candle. So you ignore the wicks. And the body of that candle is, oh, look at that. That's about 4.1 pips. So that would just qualify as a potential confirming candle. Obviously, it isn't going to meet the other criteria, but just looking at this criteria of the minimum body pips, this is actually 4.1 pips. If you had it at 5 pips, then it would look at this candle, see it's only 4.1 pips, so it would not recognize it as a confirming candle, even if all the other criteria was met. Now, the larger you make it, then you're going to get less confirming candles. The smaller you make it, the more confirming candles you're going to get. And it's just a matter of, again, your choice, how you want to describe your confirming candle to look. Next one is the confirming candle minimum retrace pips. Let's open up the manual for this. So the minimum retrace pips. So here is, uh, let's look at this example here. Here is your PP line in black going across. You've had a stop run go up, break through by three pips, and a stop run has occurred, signified by the red arrow. Now the EA will start to look for a confirming candle. So the first criteria it's looking for is the minimum body pips at least four pips. So it looks at this candle here. Yes, it is four pips. It's bigger, four pips or bigger. So it meets that criteria. The next one is the minimum retrace pips uh, needs to be one. That's what it says here, one. So minimum retrace pips means that the close of the candle, you must um, be aware that the confirming candle can only be a confirming candle when it closes. Until that time, you don't know what the candle is going to look like. So on the close of the candle, that is when the EA makes the decision as to whether this is a confirming candle or not. So this is just closed. Let's assume it's just closed. The close of the confirming candle needs to be at least one pip below the PP line. If you see here, CC minimum retrace pips, and in brackets one, that's signifying this input here. Confirming candle would need to have closed at least one pip below the PP line. In this case, it's closed a long way below it, so it easily qualifies as that. If you put zero, if it closed actually on the PP line, then it would still be potentially considered as a confirming candle. Even though um, Sterling um, requires that the confirming candle must close below the PP line. So by the strict rules that are applied um, by Sterling, if it stops and closes actually on the PP line, then that shouldn't be considered as a confirming candle. Again, that's a decision for you. So hopefully that describes the retrace pips. Now we're going to look at the third input that describes how you want your confirming candle to appear and this is the minimum percentage of the previous bar so this is um it sounds quite complex quite easy to actually understand so 
I'll just show you here and I think you'll grasp it fairly quickly. So there's your stop run. The confirming candle is now, we'll look, so there's been the stop run here. It's broken through the, uh, the PP line. We're now looking for a confirming candle. Yes, it's larger than four pips, so it meets that criteria. It's closed more than one pip below the PP line, so it's met that criteria. And now we're looking to see, in relation to the previous bar, where its close was in relation to the previous bar. So if you look at these three points here, 90%, 100%, 110%, then if the candle had closed where it's got the dotted line, if it had and 100%, if it had closed there, then it's exactly the same point as the body of the previous candle. So that would have been 100%. So if you put an 100% here, and it actually did close on that dotted line there, exactly equal with the uh, body of the candle there, of the previous candle, then that would be 100%, and that would qualify. If you'd entered 110% in here, and it closed on that 100% point, then it wouldn't qualify as a confirming candle because you would be instructing the EA only to count it as a confirming candle if it closed past the low here by an additional 10%. So it would be here, 110%. It's going to give you a better confirming candle because it's pulled back away, it's moved away from the PP line further. It's also completely engulfed the previous candle and gone an additional 10%. So it's a nicer confirming candle. So there'd be less of them, but they're better quality. I'm sure you've heard both Chad and Sterling say, every decision you make is a trade-off. It's um, One is going to give you a frequency of trade, and, the, and that's going to be against the quality of the trade. Um, conversely, if you put 90% in here, then you're saying, okay, well, I'm happy for it not to quite reach the body here. I'll accept 90%. The, the close of the candle would be not quite, uh, wouldn't quite engulf or reach the previous candle, but it would nearly get there. Now I think Chad is, sometimes goes down this route. He, he's happy for it to not quite reach the, the, um, the close of the previous candle. He's happier for it to be at 90%. Sterling is religious in saying it must be at least 100%. So this gives you a range of, you could say, 50% if you want, in which case if it closed up here, it would be 50%. Now you get lots and lots of confirming candles like that, but would that really be showing you that price is moving away and that the direction is likely to be changing? And well, that's a matter for you to decide. Maybe, maybe not. So hopefully that helps you understand what this percentage entered here should be. If you're going to follow the strict rules applied by Sterling in his room, then you're going to have at least 100% there. So last confirming candle criteria is the minimum percentage from your own high or low. So if we're talking about a sell, it would be the percentage from the from the own from the low. If you're talking about a buy, it would be the percentage from your own high. So let me show you that. Right, here we are again. So let's look at this example here. Ignore the 90%, 100%, 110%. But let's look at these two candles. So there's been a stop run. Then there's the uh, creation of the next candle as it pulls back. Is it meeting the criteria? Yes. First of all, it's larger than four pips. It's retraced more than one pip past the PP line. As it, is it closing past the previous candle? or equal to, yes, it's 100% or more. So it has closed at probably in here, this is probably something like 125% that it actually has closed at. And the last criteria is this one, the minimum percentage from the own high low. What you need to do, it looks at the total length of the candle. That's from the high here, right to the low here. And what you're saying in the input you saying here, this is for a, um, a cell, is that the close of the candle must be in the lower third. And how it's described is in the way of a percentage, 33.4, I've put, because 30.333 recurring, which is a third, I've actually rounded it up to 33.4. So it 
needs to be in the lower third or if you're looking at this at a percentage say from the top to the bottom if the top is a hundred percent and the bottom is zero percent what we're saying is in the bottom third to the bottom 33.4 percent it must be in that area somewhere for it to count as a confirming candle to the bottom 33.4 if you put in here 25 percent then it would be in the bottom 25 percent the close must be in the bottom 25 of the overall length of the candle so let's say this candle here this the whole length of the candle from the high to the low was let's just pick a nice easy figure let's say um, 24 pips so if this was 24 pips from the high to the low and we put in here a third 33.4 then a third of 24 is 8 so the close of this candle must be within the bottom 8 pips of this whole candle length so it measures from what the EE does is all automatic obviously it measures from the low 8 pips up and if it is within if the close is in within that range then it fulfills a criteria if it was a 24 pip again high to low and you'd put in here 25 percent then 25 percent of um, 24 is six pips so it would have to be within the lowest six pips so from the low measure up six pips and the close would have had to be in that range so that's how the minimum percentage from your in this case we're talking about the low if we're talking about a sell if this is conversely we're looking at the different way and we're looking at it looking for a, a buy and we're looking for it as a, a lower pp line that's been broken through instead of an upper pp line in this case then we'd be look at, looking at it as the distance from the high so it'd be in the this is just the converse so hopefully that helps explain that so these are the all the inputs under stop run and confirming candle criteria I now move on to explain the next screen which is the deactivation criteria